We're going to be looking now at these problems involving gears in mesh, which just means that they are connected and they are therefore going to be moving together. So you can see on our sketch in, on the right, our yellow points, these are where our gears are going to be moving together. So this is where they're in mesh. So our gears in mesh, we're going to be able to use these equations for when we have these types of problems. So if you look at, on the right, our yellow dots, we can say that because our gears are moving together, they're going to have the same speed. So we know that our speed equals our omega. So we can say our radius of A times our omega A equals our radius of B times our omega B. And if we wanted to solve for the angular velocity of B, we can write that as RA over RB times omega A. So these equations for our angular velocity are going to apply anytime you have gears in mesh. And we can say very similarly for our tangential acceleration that our a of t, which you can see on the right, is shown in green. So our a of t is going to be a of t of a equals our tangential acceleration of b. So these will be equal. And we know that our tangential acceleration is equal to r times alpha. So we can write our radius of A times our angular acceleration of A equals our radius of B times our angular acceleration of B. So we can say our angular acceleration of B is going to be equal to our radius of A over our radius of B times our acceleration of angular acceleration of A. So these two equations apply for gears in mesh and you're going to use them very often. Now in this problem here we also have this cylinder C and anything that we're doing with C this is really problem specific but anything here that we're using for our mesh these equations those are you know you can use those as you go through solving other types of problems. So now that we know these equations and we've introduced them, let's look at the example. So for a short period of time, the motor turns gear A with a constant angular acceleration of alpha A equals 4.5 radians per second squared starting from rest. Determine the velocity of the cylinder and the distance it travels in three seconds. The cord is wrapped around pulley D, which is rigidly attached to gear B. So let's start now, now that we have our equations, let's start by looking at what we need to find. So we're looking for our cylinder velocity and our distance is going to travel in three seconds. So now that we know that we're starting from rest, let's start writing down our equations. So our acceleration of C. So this is going to be equal to R times what we're going to define BI times our angular acceleration of B. So why can we say that? So if we look at this cylinder C and all of these red dots along the rope, this is going to be having the same velocity at any point. But we're especially going to be interested in this point right here. So you can see maybe better on the left, this point here. This is going to allow us to write RBI. So this is going to be our inner radius of gear B. And that is where we have our block C is suspended from. So all along here, we're all going to have same velocity, especially right here, is that's what we're going to start looking at. So we can say that our acceleration of C is going to be equal to our inner radius of gear B times our angular acceleration of gear B. 
but this is going to be our tangential component of our acceleration of cylinder C. So we know that this is going to be true. So our acceleration of C is going to be equal to our radius, our inner radius of B, times our angular acceleration of B. So now we can write one step further for this problem specifically. We don't know what our angular acceleration of gear B is. We only know what our angular acceleration of gear A is. So let's write this in terms of our alpha A by plugging in this equation that we just solved for. So our acceleration of C will equal our inner radius times RA over RB times alpha A. So now let's begin plugging in. So we know that our inner radius is given to us in the problem as 125. And we're going to multiply that by our radius of A, so 75 over our radius of B, 225. And we're going to multiply that by our angular acceleration of gear A. So AC is going to equal 187 millimeters per second squared. And we can use this to find our velocity. So we're starting from rest, so we can say V is going to be equal to AC times time. So our VC is going to equal 187 times 3, because we want to know the velocity after 3 seconds. So our velocity is going to equal 562.5 millimeters per second after 3 seconds. And lastly, we just want to find the distance that C will travel, so we'll use this equation here. And we can plug in 1 half times 187 times 3 squared, which is 9. So our position is going to equal 844 millimeters. So that is how we solve these types of problems. We're always going to use these equations in yellow. And those are going to allow us to start drawing different relationships like we did for our cylinder C to solve. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. That really helps support my channel and helps me continue making videos for you guys. I'll see you next time.